Hello, this is Tempo Africa TV's Beyond the Headlines show, and I'm your host, Petros Haile. Today, uh, our program is about uh, ARAHA. ARAHA is the American Relief Agency for the Horn of Africa. And we have the executive director here, uh, Mohammed Idris. How are you doing, Mohammed? I'm doing well, thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, in fact, uh, Mohammed is not a stranger to us. I remember about seven years ago uh, when we had a Horn of Africa conference at the University of Minnesota. Yes. You were at the opening act. And uh, even that time, you were talking about uh, uh, ARAHA. American Relief Agency for the Horn of Africa. Uh, it's been seven years, and prior to that, you have a few years back. And uh, all in all, I would say close to 20 years. <laughs> all right. So uh, I will go directly to the question. But before the <coughs> question, I just wanted to read this, uh, some of the success of ARAHA. <clears throat> ARAHA has achieved an impressive record of success while serving some of the most vulnerable population in the Horn, including refugees, internally displaced persons, and residents of rural areas. In seeking to nurture these communities, the organization has focused on providing both immediate crisis relief in the Horn in the form of food uh, and uh, medical supplies, as well as long-term development in the form of education, self-sufficiency projects, and access to clean water. To allow ARAHA to better support and understand the communities it serves, the organization opened a network of field offices across the region and has cultivated partnership with local community organizations, international and non-governmental organizations, and governments at all levels. Uh, this is the, the core of your activities, I would say. So how is ARAHA formed or created? Uh, I know it created some sometimes in 2000, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> well, um, thank you, uh, Petros. And uh, I would like, uh, um, first of all, to thank, um, thank you and to thank your program for uh, inviting us here and for uh, Tembo Africa TV also for bringing the African voices um, out uh, to the people. So thank you for doing that. Um, uh, Araha was founded in uh, 2000, and uh, in 2000, if you remember, there was a famine, and uh, a group of Africans here in Minnesota, uh, Somali Americans, Ethiopian Americans, Eritrean Americans, Sudanese Americans, um, I remember in 2000, uh, we came together just chatting and um, having in mind the, 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 the famine that was going on in, in Ethiopia. And we said, what we can do? Um, we are here in, in America blessed uh, with many things. Uh, we have jobs, we have health care, our kids go to schools. But we know that we came from um, an area that's still struggling, still uh, suffering from famine, from drought, from war and conflicts. Uh, so we felt at that time that there is a, a moral obligation that uh, we need to do something for our people uh, back home. So that's how uh, Araha was established. So we just thought, 
let's start with a non-profit organization, a relief organization, so that at least we can help with the, with the current famine that was going on at that time. Um, so it's a diverse, uh, it was uh, formed by a diverse group from East Africa, and, um, and since then, um, you know, we did not think at the time that it will reach the point that it is right now, but, you know, it's always nice to see um, the seed growing. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's great. Yeah, the 20 years history is a lot. It's, it's, uh, it's, yeah. it's actually, to be more precise, it's about 16 years, 16 because years? we were okay. about uh, 2000 that we were established. Uh, yeah. Okay. But, but yeah, it is a quiet time. Quiet time. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't aged a bit. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, what countries are you involved in? You, you, you're saying uh, the Horn of Africa. Is there a specific countries that you're engaged, uh, the, the activities? Uh, yes. Why um, the Horn of Africa too? Uh, we, uh, right now, we, we chose actually from the beginning uh, to be a focus organization on a specific region, and that's the Horn of Africa. Um, and the reason for uh, our focus is to have an impact, a better impact. You know, there are a lot of organizations that are worldwide, and when you are an organization that's serving everywhere, uh, your impact will not be as much, because always the resources are going to be limited. So we thought to limit our uh, self to the whole of Africa region. Uh, one, because it is one of the Change. most underserved uh, region in the world, uh, one of the most devastated region in the world, unfortunately. And it's also the land that unfortunately become known of the land of famine and, and hunger and drought. Uh, and, and, and that image, um, we would like to replace that image with something better. So we, we thought to work on this area that also we know as, as founders, we know this area better. And um, when you are in an area that is in the size of the Horn of Africa, it's also, by the way, it's not a small area. We are talking about an area that, you know, about 200 million people. Uh, and the Horn of Africa term could stretch to include eight countries. It, uh, it could include uh, Sudan, uh, Somalia, Djibouti, Eritrea, Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, um, and Eritrea. So all this area could be called the Horn of Africa. But right now we are on our operations are in, in four countries. Uh, you can say the most devastated countries in the Horn of Africa or the countries that are uh, that that host the largest number of refugees and these countries are Somalia is Ethiopia uh, Kenya uh, and Sudan those are the four they countries right now we have uh, operations and we have actually even field offices there oh, okay. they say those four countries. in those four countries yes okay so uh I know 16 years is, not, is a lot of years, <laughs> and uh, you're getting stronger. <laughs> uh, what kind of activities do you do? What kind of help do you provide to those uh, victims, like either droughts uh, or other refugee-related problems? Uh, we, we are an organization that do both uh, relief and development. Um, when we started the organization, uh, we were more of of relief organization, as you could see from the name of the organization, American Relief Agency for the Horn of Africa. Um, over the time, uh, we found ourselves that actually we are in a cycle of, of, uh, of this drought and famine, and it's not something that uh, is going to end soon. Um, and this is uh, something we need to know about the Horn of they Africa, that, that the cost. climate change is really no, very obvious to us. Um, most of our work in the relief part is, is, is between two extremes, uh, between either um, relief, uh, drought relief or flood relief. Mm -hmm. So you have those both uh, extreme um, um, aspects that, that really affecting the Horn of Africa. And so we thought if we are going to combat this, 
um, we need to have a development aspect also because when you empower the people no, of no, the no, region no, and make them adapt to the new reality uh, through education, through self-reliance, uh, they are in a better shape with instead of just handing over, you know, um, over food and, uh, and, and, and just water. Um, um, because that's not going to last for long. Um, so as, as it could say, you know, um, uh, teach him a fish, uh, teach him how to fish instead of giving him a fish. No so fish. that's the model we are trying to empower the people uh, of the region uh, more uh, through education and, and, and self-reliance. That, that's interesting, just like you said, yeah, um, most of the relief organization, uh, their uh, immediate concern and interest is just to assist in terms of food or giving them, but uh, you guys go beyond that. In that sense, uh, what are some of your achievements, like if you can itemize one by one or give us two or three examples? Okay. Um, you know, um, we really have, uh, we, uh, through the, the last uh, 15 years or 16 years, we really, we were able to um, uh, accomplish um, a, a significant uh, achievement, the although of we always down. feel that because of the, the needs and the, the huge needs in the area, we feel that what we, whatever we are doing is a drop in an ocean, but in still, um, I think Araha made a good uh, record. So uh, just to we give you some numbers, um, we built uh, over 250 water wells uh, in the four countries. Uh, we uh, of uh, assisted... Supply. Uh, or provided about uh, over 600,000 food baskets uh, during the famine, during just, uh, you know, this is part of our ongoing program uh, over the, the last 16 years. Uh, we provided medicine, medical supplies to uh, about 800,000 people uh, in Somalia, uh, especially within the medical uh, field. But, but also uh, we have uh, health care, uh, and 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 uh, and, and uh, medical assistance in Sudan also uh, by uh, organizing uh, medical convoy to the refugee camps uh, where health, uh, you try to uh, provide some medical assistance in that part of the world. We also have every year uh, a minimum of like 250 orphans that are sponsored in a regular basis uh, from the four countries. Um, and we have a, another unique project that also uh, we were able through that to help uh, uh, um, you know, hundreds and, and, and thousands of, of, of families. And that's the self-reliance project, we call it. Uh, it it's basically to provide to um, uh, a family uh, something that make them work and generate income. Um, that could be a donkey cart where they can transport uh, they can transport goods or even people and get you know their income from uh, or dairy goats or dairy cow uh, just different we try whatever works locally uh, that make people work and generate income uh, so that they can stand on their feet you you also do some family shelter and uh, micro financing and yes and what, what fa yeah family shelter and and um, family shelter and, and microfinance also the same idea okay. um, you know sometimes instead of giving the f those families uh, food um, we try to ask them you know what you can do locally maybe a widow can start uh, having a table uh, selling tomatoes and and, 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 you know, and uh, onion or things like that, just in the local market. And she may need uh, a capital of $100 or $200. So um, we ask them to, you know, pay this back in a very small amount that doesn't hinder their progress. <laughs> but at the same time, when this money comes back, we uh, give it to another family so that they can have that progress. Okay. Uh, so okay. this is one of the, with the, with one the, of the projects that we do. And you also work with the orphanage. In, in different areas or yes okay yes we we work with orphans and and orphans is, is a big problem in 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 the horn of africa um and um whether it is through uh, uh, due to hiv or just through uh, because of the war mm -hmm. um you know the uh, the person who was supporting the family will be will, you know will, will die so 
because of the social um, fabric, the strong social fabric, families actually take care of each other, okay. but they are poor themselves. Mm -hmm. So what we are trying to do, our model is to try to help orphans while they are with their relatives, but just to make sure that they are going to school, yeah. uh, they are, you know, their fees is paid, and also to cover their basic needs in, in, a, in, a, uh, in a monthly basis. Okay. okay. I, I also noticed that you do have a high school in Sudan, uh, Shagrab. Yes. Oh, uh, saying it right. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> Shagrab. Shagrab. Actually, yeah. Uh, this is uh, this is one of the, the dearest uh, uh, project to my heart because um, uh, first of all, it's education. Always, I like education because I know it is it treat the underlying problem in that mm -hmm. part of the world, mm -hmm. and and this is a good example of how education really change uh, uh, people. And, uh, you know, Nelson Mandela once said, uh, uh, w education is the most powerful weapon to change the world. And this is, this is uh, a testimony for that. This is a, a Shagarab refugee camps, for those who do not know, mm -hmm. is the largest ref uh, Eritrean refugee camps in Sudan. Uh, it was established in 1985. And it hosts about 35,000 uh, residents. And since 1985 till 2011, there was no a single high school in that camp. And you can imagine uh, the loss of a generation that those people suffer from, not to have a single high school diploma uh, holder in a whole 35,000 people. That's, that's just huge. Mm -hmm. So when we established that school in 2011, when we started that school, at uh, the beginning we wanted to be for, for the girls okay. um, uh, because the girls were not able even to go outside the camp. Um, and we thought it's, it's, you know, it's important to, to, to have that. And uh, what we found out that later on actually after uh, you know, a few years of, of graduating um, high school diploma holder in that camp, that the camp start changing. Uh, and, and that's the powerful of, of, of education. Um, when you graduate every year 30 girls, that means you are changing actually 30 families because those girls are going to be uh, you know, moms and they are going to affect their children. They will have children. And you can imagine the impact that those uh, 30 uh, girls is going Good to have. And some of our graduates actually, they already joined high, uh, a college and they are going to uh, colleges and they are graduating and that's just... Um, it it's, uh, it's, was a very, very uh, okay. powerful project and still going on. Actually, now we turn it also to um, two shifts. So we, ha we are serving both uh, uh, boys and girls uh, in the camp. It, it hosts about two, 270 students, high school students in okay. that refugee camp. So the, the entire 35,000 uh, population, are they refugee? All refugees. All the entire community? Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah, when you talk about Shagrav, I also notice you do sponsorship, like a college sponsorship, student sponsorship, and teacher sponsorship. Uh, how does that work? Um, the, the, you know, every year uh, w uh, we are able to graduate uh, to, uh, for, for some students to help them graduate. Uh, and once you graduate from high school, uh, we want to open the door for those also to continue their uh, educational progress. So we are trying to uh, provide them with, with a scholarship uh, that um, enable them to study in the, in the local universities around them, uh, in some cities like in Eastern Sudan, uh, in Gadarif, Kasala, if you know that part yeah. of the world. Um, and um, when we provide that, uh, uh, um, that, that scholarship, it's really it's not a lot in terms of the, the, the amount, uh -huh. with maybe within like $100 you can sponsor a month, you can sponsor uh, students and it can pay for, for, their, uh, for their fees, uh, tuition fees, they can pay for their um, uh, you know, transportation and even uh, um, you, their living expenses. But it, it makes a big difference for them because once they graduate, you can imagine uh, that how that will change the life of that family because yep. now they have a person who's graduating can have a job and can support 
that family. So that, that's the purpose of, of, of and also we have the, the teacher um, uh, sponsorship is, uh, we are taking care of this uh, uh, school. And okay. there are about, you know, 13, 14 um, teachers who we have to pay in a monthly basis. So we ask people to uh, sponsor them uh, so that, the, the, you know, the, the, the school can give, uh, can do its, uh, its uh, uh, mission in a regular basis. In fact, uh, since uh, we're going to display the, the website, uh, they can go and find out exactly what they can do if people wanted to contribute, right? Yes, yes. Actually, uh, to, to know more about Araha, uh, just visit, uh, we have a, a nice website, uh, www.araha.org, A-R-A-H-A.org. Um, and we have a, um, an active Facebook page also where we put the projects that we, we did and, uh, you know, the different activities that um, uh, our field offices and the headquarters here do. So I encourage people to visit us there and to like our page uh, so that you can follow what we are doing. Yep. Uh, I cannot help myself, but I see you guys actually use solar energy in some of the areas that you provide service. How does that work? Yeah, and, and, I, and the idea came from uh, the realization of the, the impact of climate change uh, in our region. The Horn of Africa uh, is going to be one of the uh, most affected um, area in the world by the climate change. Um, in general, Africa is going to be, uh, unfortunately, the most affected by the climate change negatively uh, um, uh, comparing to other continents. Although, um, for the fact that it is the least contributor to the pollution and to the, um, the causes of, of, of uh, climate change. But, um, but that's, uh, that's what the uh, scientists are predicting. Uh, and specifically within Africa, the Horn of Africa is expected to be even more affected because, you know, the equator passed mm -hmm. uh, the Horn of Africa. So um, uh, within uh, 50 to 100 years, um, scientists actually are expecting uh, that area to be more hotter, more dry, um, will be less rain, and um, crops land will shrink within 100 years to uh, about like 85 percent. That's a scary. Mm -hmm. um, so we are trying to um, make the people in the Horn of Africa adapt to the new reality, to the climate change consequences that's going to happen. Um, so we are trying to uh, introduce some uh, alternative, uh, especially taking advantage of the solar energy that we have. We have a plenty of solar energy because of the, of the equator. So why don't we take advantage of that and um, help families who are off-grid area, uh, area where there is no electricity, you know, having, uh, using that solar energy to um, have a solar lamp or, or a solar stove. Uh, that's why we, we started introducing, and we already actually, we have about, I think we about uh, already helped 200 families uh, with solar stove um, in Sudan, and we have right now 200 in Kenya uh, that uh, actually under implementation. Um, we also, also we are introducing a solar light okay. uh, yeah. that we made the research and we found that it is the best in the market um, and it is affordable and it's a friendly user. Um, and so I, I don't have the, actually in our office we have the, yeah. the, the solar energy sample, oh, but, okay. but if you go to the website you can, you can see that. But that's one of the areas we are trying to um, uh, push our donors to help on that area. Um, and not only that, in future actually we are trying also even to help farmers adapt to the new reality of climate change by maybe providing them with seeds uh, that um, uh, tolerate more heat and less mm -hmm. rain because okay. that's the future that is going coming. Yeah. You know, that's fascinating. I saw it on the website uh, yeah. about the solar energy, uh, about six, seven women lined up and using uh, technology. In fact, uh, Minnesota happens to be one of the, the states that uh, manufacture solar energy, the, the panel. Yes. Uh, are you guys dealing with them a lot or? 
You know, I visited them. Uh, I visited uh, one of the manufacturer here, local manufacturer here. Um, and M Minnesota is very friendly to that, and uh, uh, it's very supportive for that. And, and we see that in the community. And we have uh, a good relationship with, uh, with some environmental um, organization who take care of the environment because yeah. we share uh, the same interests, uh, like Sierra Club. Okay. Um, okay. Actually, we partnered with them um, a while ago and to raise awareness within the East African community about the, the impact of climate change uh, in the Horn of Africa in general and on the planet. I mean, this is climate change is affecting everywhere. Whatever is happening in Africa, we are going to be uh, affected by. And whatever uh, we do here, uh, the people in the Horn of Africa is going to be affected by. So uh, we, we try to develop that partnership with those organizations who yeah. have similar mission. Okay. And, and uh, yeah, no, you know, you. Your evidence is ample. There's <laughs> uh, so much uh, activities that I saw I, when I went through to your uh, website. Uh, but you know, Thank like you for doing the homework. Oh, yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah, like the solar energy and all that stuff. It really impressed a lot of people. And uh, <clears throat> a lot of relief organizations they tend to have uh, mismanagement problem. Uh, management problem. They mismanage their their money, their funds, and uh, they abuse it to a degree. Uh, what is your advantage in this particular area? Like uh, how transparent and accountable is your organization? organization. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's a good question uh, because um, always for donors, there are a lot of organization and people don't know how to review them and mm -hmm. how to you know, uh, handle them or even how to choose one that they can donate to. Uh, but, you know, uh, as time uh, goes, uh, people are getting smarter and people trying to uh, identify uh, which one is doing well and which one is not. And actually, there are organizations, especially within the U.S., uh, that review charities. Um, we have organizations like the, the Charity Navigator mm -hmm. is uh, the, one of the leading U.S. Uh, charity review organizations. Uh, and actually, you don't apply for them. They just look at your records um, collectively, with, for even within from the U.S., okay. from the IRS uh, paper that you submit. Mm -hmm. And they, based on that, they give you a kind of uh, grading. And um, we were pleased to um, get their review in the last four years. And for the last four years, um, we, we got their highest ranking of four stars. Uh, but even more than that, they have even more scrutiny, um, and they try to um, rank organization even within the U.S. Okay. How they are doing in term of transparency and accountability, and um, uh, this year I think they put Araha uh, among the top 10 percent of U.S. charities in okay. in transparency and accountability. And people can go and you know charitynavigator.org and check on that but also we have within minnesota also we have the charity review council which is also another review organization uh, mm -hmm. um, that do reviewing for for other organization and they also um, uh, uh, ranked us and uh, as a met the standard uh, organization um, so yeah it it is it is important that uh, um, donors do their homework and i i'm always pleased to when, when I see uh, donors who call the office and, uh, Ask, okay. uh, and just you know, check on that. Like um, a, a week ago, actually, a, a donor uh, called and, and say, hey, guys, I, you know, I checked your website, and I checked about you, and uh, I checked the charity navigator, and they recommended you know, your name. Uh, you know, in the, in the, um, uh, and, and she asked certain questions. She asked, mm -hmm. okay, how much you spend? toward your program, how much yeah. you spend toward, you know. So I, I really asked, uh, told her that thank you for doing your homework. Yeah, thank good, you for doing good, the yeah. due diligence because that's, uh, it's important to do that. Do that. Um, yeah. And our board was very, um, in this aspect, they were, um, from the beginning, they were, uh, they wanted to build an organization with a, a very solid foundation because uh, trust in, in, with, with organization, with nonprofit, is really an important aspect. Um, uh, if you don't have that trust, um, um, you lose you lose a lot. Yeah. You lose a lot, and it doesn't last actually. Okay. You will not. You may you may 
you may last for one year or two years, but then uh, people will find, okay. find okay. out. So it's so, always good to ask that question. Uh, the next question would be, I know I saw you in Sudan and you traveled uh, to uh, different places. And uh, <coughs> when those donat donators, when they give money, uh, how much of it goes to the operation? How much actually received by the, the independent recipients? And the, go to the program. Yeah, to the people. Yeah, um, for us, um, th there, we have an external auditor uh, that audit our record. Um, and this is required by the law in Minnesota for organizations who have, you know, 750,000 and above. They have to do uh, an audit. And um, those external auditor, um, you know, review all these things, and then they see how much you spent through program and um, through, and how much you spent through, you know, for management and fundraiser. And uh, the average um, um, percentage is about 8% goes toward um, management and, and fundraising expenses, and about 92% goes toward um, uh, programs. Now, uh, from, you know, a year to year is different, but that's the average. Oh, okay, approximate. okay. Um, I want to say something about that uh, because uh, there is a myth that um, with donors that um, they uh, they always like to hear that you know 100 percent of the of the money is going to, uh, toward program and and some organizations unfortunately claim that uh, but in reality actually I will be concerned to give an organization that claim 100 percent of the money going because that's not honesty mm -hmm. that's not transparency. Uh, there is a cost involved. Um, I just give an example to our donors is that when you donate to us, you know, $100 through credit card, the credit card companies take about maybe one and a half or two, two, two percent, okay? Mm -hmm. So you can, uh, where that money, uh, you know, it's already before even reach us, there is a uh, percentage that went, uh, you know, through um, uh, fundraising expenses like this. So um, I will be, as a donor, I will be, cautious from um, organizations that claim they are 100% um, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. toward program because that's just not the reality. Okay, okay. And uh, yeah, one of the pictures that I saw, I saw you with uh, the mayor, Rybeck? Uh, Rybeck, yes, <laughs> yeah. yes. And yeah. Uh, like, uh, what's his name, Keith Ellison. How friendly are those uh, state officials to, to your organization? Um, you know, uh, this picture actually goes, I, this is just an example of, you know, we are trying to explain to uh, the people in Minnesota, whether they are officials or, you know, just the mainstream public, uh, what ARA has do and try to involve people from, you know, different levels. Uh, and even uh, some senators and some congressmen, we invite them and uh, we have a relationship. Uh, like Keith Ellison even spoke in uh, at our, at one of our uh, Mm -hmm. um, event, annual dinner uh, event. Okay. Uh, so, uh, and you know, we, we, from time to time, we may even need them uh, to raise some of the concern that we have as a, as a humanitarian organization. Okay. Um, yeah. So. Yeah. yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, <coughs> because I keep seeing them and. Uh, Rybeck and the other guys, and I say, these are very influential uh, personalities. <laughs> <laughs> they are, they are. I'm glad somebody is connected with them. They are, they are. Uh, and you travel a lot, you know, you travel a lot to Sudan, to Somalia. Uh, and tell us a little bit about it, your expectation and what, what you actually witnessed when you get there. Um, I, I, I do travel a lot because this is the, the, the nature of, 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 of the job. Um, um, and I travel, uh, I travel to these areas, uh, Somalia, Ethiopia, Kenya, and Sudan. Um, uh, part of it is, you know, we want to ensure that what we were entrusted in, you know, is going in the right direction. So although we have field offices, but we need to visit them as part of our monitoring policy. Uh, but also it is important for an executive director to go and visit because uh, that's what, what charges us, you know, when we go and see uh, the devastation, the suffering, and you um, be with the people there, and you, you understand better the situation, and you can, it will inform your decision that you make in the, within the organization, and also it will really charge you uh, to speak about the suffering of the people. Uh, you know, I, I travel and I talk in conferences 
uh, about the suffering of the Horn of Africa. And, and these are important for me to keep me, uh, you know, um, keep you going. Uh, uh, keep me going. Uh, yeah. and, and it's really a very helpful, very helpful. And this is not an easy area yeah. to travel to. Okay. Uh, okay. You know, and especially for organizations who try to go beyond the capital and, you know, to rural area and to uh, some difficult part uh, of the world. Security. Uh, yeah, of that region. And it's a security issue. You know, I travel in t to Somalia, for example, um, in, in, in 2011 during the famine, and it was, it was very dangerous. Uh, uh, even Somalis were hesitant to even to travel there. And you went there. Uh, <laughs> but, 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 you know, the, the humanitarian passion is just so strong. I remember I have uh, uh, a, fa a, a board member who is a Somali uh, young man, um, Jelani Hussein, who, um, you know, even travel uh, with me, although he's not part of that, and mm -hmm. he, he could be targeted even. Uh, but, you know, we traveled there, and there was no even any, any protection uh, um, at that time. Uh, but we thought this is something we need to do, and it was very important for us to be there okay. and really seeing and actually participating in the distribution of food and, and, and also we saw the difficulties our field offices are really facing in a daily basis. Mm -hmm. So it, it was very helpful for us and it is, it is dangerous also. I, I, you know, in that area, the, the, the least you can get sometimes is that uh, the danger of the road. Okay. I, um, I experienced at least I survived two uh, car accident or, or um, uh, road uh, road accidents. Uh, okay. Actually, two years ago in Kenya, the, where the, the car actually flipped around, and we we were just so blessed to be to survive. But the road is just bad. And um, we keep traveling again and again. We keep traveling <laughs> again, uh, and uh, and uh, it's just the area is yeah. uh, uh, it's it's a beautiful area, and uh, you know the people are just uh, very nice, very friendly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think uh, Jalali Hussein is a spokesperson here for Somali community, right? Yeah, he, he okay. right now he serves as the Care Minnesota chapter. Okay. Um, yeah, for civil rights and civil rights, yeah, okay. yeah. I just heard him the day before. That's why the is name that came right? To yeah, me. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's a, one of our very active board members, and yeah. you know, we travel together. Uh, Good. Uh, Perfect. Yeah, together to some area. Still, without departing from the topic of travel. Uh, Eritreans. There's a lot of Eritrean refugees. Actually, per capita, maybe the second largest Eritrean uh, refugee crisis uh, in the world. <laughs> and uh, most of them go to Sudan and to a neighboring country. Uh, how would you deal with those kind of issues? I know we cannot go to Eritrea, but you go around it, right? <laughs> yes, yes. And, and that's a sad part that uh, um, a person like me who uh, are able to uh, uh, go to different countries but are not able to not your own. <laughs> go my own, uh, but hopefully we, we, we hope that uh, things will change and be able to have even uh, office in, 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 in Eritrea and uh, to, be, to be able to serve uh, in that, uh, um, uh, that country. Uh, but yeah, we, we help Eritrea refugees in um, neighboring countries, in Sudan, in Ethiopia, in Yemen even. Um, uh, as you mentioned, uh, Eritreans, uh, in terms of numbers of uh, immigrants, um, they are number two after the Syrian, yes. especially to, to Europe. And, uh, and it's amazing to know that because um, uh, people know why for Syria, but uh, uh, for Eritrea, which is, uh, there is no war right now <coughs> going on, uh, to have such, uh, with that small population, to have such f uh, flow of immigrants, it's, it's, uh, it's sad. Yeah. It is sad. Um, so we try to help um, in these countries, but our, um, uh, our main, our majority of our projects in Sudan, I mean, we help in, in, um, in Ethiopia and we help in Yemen, but these were um, scattered uh, projects from time to time. Uh, but we have a, a very strong base in Sudan because also the, the majority of the refugees are uh, crossing the border uh, to Sudan. So there we have uh, different type of projects. We provide um, food assistance. We provide education as like the high school um, in Shagarab. 
uh, we provide self-reliance projects, uh, uh, just, you know, a small project that help families stand on their feet. Um, <clears throat> but but the, 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 the catastrophe of, of really of, of the Eritrean refugees uh, is just um, uh, a lot of people don't know about it. <laughs> and uh, um, Eritreans, not only, uh, not only we have about half a million people in Sudan, and not only we have, only in refugee camps, about 130,000 uh, refugees, just Eritreans in Ethiopia, in the camp only. Mm -hmm. Forget about what, what our, outside the camp. Um, we have a, um, unknown numbers, uh, maybe 50,000 or something like in Yemen. We have about 45,000 in Israel, a country that even is not and near us. Close they are. Yeah, and, uh, and hundreds of, of youth died in, in, the, in the Mediterranean uh, Ocean, uh, unfortunately. So it's, it's, it's really uh, a plight that a lot of people don't know about, but uh, we hope that um, things will get better in the future. In the future. Uh, thank you. Uh, I was reading this, uh, this young student from uh, Southwest High School in Minneapolis. What's the story about him? <laughs> Yeah, that, that's a good question, actually. Um, one of the things Araha is doing is um, we try to empower our community, East African community, and just uh, the general public to, to help on their own using the platform of Araha. So one of the campaigns that we have is like a community campaign called Lifesaver Campaign. And that campaign can be uh, done by one person can be by student association, can be by a family, can be by you know, a group of people. They come together and they want to do something. And the basic idea is that um, you know, a lot of people, when they want to do something, they want to dig a water well, for example, or build a school, they think that they have to start a, a nonprofit organization. Mm -hmm. And what happened is that uh, they start with that passion and then with the hassles of uh, the administrative hassle and the legal hassle and the, just the, the work of nonprofit, um, the idea after a while it is just dies. Uh, actually, the statistics uh, show us that for every 100 nonprofit that start or businesses that start, only 20% survive. Uh, so what we, t we tell people, if you are passionate about a specific project, you don't have to start another profit, uh, another profit, uh, non-profit organization. Mm -hmm. uh, just come to us, and we will provide you with a platform uh, that help you to energize your community, your coworkers, your friends, and do the fundraising, and we do the implementation of the project where you want, and then we bring you back the video and the pictures of that project and the information, and then you share it with the people who donated. So basically, we create um, a lifesaver campaign that they can call. Everybody can call. Okay. And actually, if you go to our website, uh, araha.org, you will see at the bottom of the home page several um, lifesaver campaigns, like the one at the Southwest, uh, Muhammad Samatar, I think yeah, his name. Uh, yeah, Muhammad uh, he, Samatar. Did, he did. And, um, <clears throat> and through that campaign, actually, he was able to... Um, um, raise funds for, yeah. to build 10 water wells yeah. uh, okay. in, in, in Somalia. Um, so basically the idea, and this is something I want to emphasize, if you are thinking to build a water well, if you are thinking to maybe build a school, and you, you want to do it through the help of your friends, co-workers, and things like that, we can create that platform for you. And we give you in the, in the, uh, a page or a website, a page that have even the donate a button where okay. people can donate directly to that specific uh, campaign. And you can send that uh, uh, link through Facebook, through Twitter, through all social media outlets, and share it with people within the US, within North America, within Europe. You know, people who have, they can donate if they have PayPal or they have a uh, uh, credit card. So this is just another way of empowering people to, to do and, and I'm very I'm very glad mm -hmm. to see um, activities you know especially from young people who are coming and, and taking initiative yeah. we have uh, an Eritrean um, uh, actually young um, woman who um, 
uh, established, uh, she wanted to do a, a documentary film about Eritrean refugees in Sudan. And so she raised funds through that. And she was able to go there and document and produce, actually, now the trailer is, is already there. Okay. Uh, but but she is right now working uh, to produce a whole film, okay. a documentary film about that. Uh, we have some uh, uh, people from Somalia who right now, actually, yesterday I got the pictures from, the, from one village where the drought hit very bad. Mm -hmm. uh, so they raised funds from the community. And we were able to help about 100 families in that part of, of, of Somalia. So th this is just an, um, uh, uh, campaigns that uh, people can use, and they don't have to worry about you know, how they are going to raise the fund. Uh, they don't have to worry about the legal issues. You know, that all hassles will go using the platform of ARA. So they, they can channel it through you guys? Yes, they can channel it. And uh, this way, they don't have to hassle about the whole issues. Mm -hmm. And also, we bring back uh, a report, full report, with pictures and videos, and give it to them back so that they can see the nice work they did, and they share it with mm -hmm. their friends and their coworkers, uh, so that everybody enjoy uh, with the accomplishment that they did. Thank you. I think we've pretty much covered everything. <laughs> and if you have a uh, last word, uh, to say, I'll give you about a minute. Well, thank you, Petrus, first of all, uh, again, uh, for uh, giving me this opportunity. And um, I just want to say um, uh, to whoever who is watching, there is an organization uh, that are led by um, people from East Africa um, and who knows the area, who um, uh, speak the languages and also uh, um, you know, understand the culture of, of that area uh, in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And uh, we are able to uh, bring relief and development. But this is something we cannot do ourselves. So please, um, if you want to help, uh, please feel free, free to call us um, uh, at 763-270-5351 or visit our website at www.araha.org. Uh, we are... Um, uh, a 501 c tax exempt organization and um, we look forward to be um, uh, uh, a destiny uh, f for you to come and to ask and to explore how you can help um, one of the most devastated uh, region in the world thank you Mohammed Idris Mohammed Idris is the executive director of the American Relief Agency for the Horn of Africa uh, again, we thank you for taking your time and briefing us about the situation on the Horn of Africa. Thanks again. On this note, uh, we end today's program. We'll see you with a different guest next week. Until then, have a nice one. Thank you.